What's happening? Hello world. This is Johnny DeLuca. Welcome to your 12th SQL Server tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create database diagrams. And then I'm really briefly going to talk to you about understanding the file table. This tutorial is going to be pretty short. So, create a database diagram. We are going to go to our databases folder. I'm going to be using the AdventureWorks database right here. You do not have this database installed. You can use a different one, such as one of the databases that we've created. But those ones that we created, my first database and my database two, we've only created two tables. The AdventureWorks sample database is a free one you can download online and it comes preloaded with a whole bunch of tables so it's better for me showing you this example and if you want to install that just google it it's real easy anyways so new database diagram we're going to go to right here and then the database thing oh hang on a sec i gotta do something real quick since i've never used this okay as you just saw that gave me an error because I just installed this database and it does not yet have an owner. So what I need to do is go to properties right here, go up to files, and then that's the name of my machine. That's the instance I'm running. So add oh or excuse me, no, I don't need that. There we go. Okay, now we should be good to go. Alright, back to database diagrams, new database diagram. This is the normal thing that you will see. The database does not have one or more of the supported objects. Just click yes. Alright, now we have a whole list of all these tables that we can add. And just for instance, let's just add a couple of them. Why don't we add, uh, let's do this guy, add person, and then address type, and then how about we do business entity, person, business entity address, and business entity contact. Sure, why not? Okay, I'm going to close. Now, you see this little handy diagram we have here? Well, what this is for, this includes a complete list of columns for each table and most important, the foreign key relationships between the tables. So that's what this is for. There are third-party applications that do this. Some are a little more robust, but the built-in one here does the job just fine. So, as you can see, uh, Real simple, real easy. Again, to walk you through it, you just take whatever database it is you have in question, expand it, go to database diagrams, click on new diagram, and then you'll get a list of all the different tables you can choose from, and choose whichever ones you like, and it'll show the relationships uh, between the tables. Pretty cool. All right. And uh, besides that, I just wanted to give you, I just wanted to talk to you about understanding the file table. So, SQL Server 2012 introduces a new type of table, the file table. This table builds on the existing file stream technology. Therefore, you must enable the file stream capabilities prior to creating a file table. The file table feature allows you to store various types of documents, and you can also directly query the attributes exposed by the Windows file system using T-SQL. FileStream is an advanced feature of SQL Server, and a detailed description of it is beyond the scope of this tutorial, what we're doing right now. However, an introduction to the file table is necessary because it offers some you know, unique capabilities to the relational database management system. Basically, it brings together SQL Server and the Windows file namespace. As a result, integrated SQL Server services such as a full text, 
and semantic search can query the unstructured unstructured data stored in the file table. So just a little background on understanding the file table. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in the next tutorial.